Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Saturday, December 11th, and this is the NBA DFS video for today. So in today's video, we'll be going over a recap of yesterday's picks, seeing how they turned out, talking about the injuries in play for tonight's slate. It is going to be, I believe, a six-game main slate on both sides. And then going over my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for tonight's slate as well. But before we get started, going to take a quick look back at yesterday's picks, see how they turned out. So at the point guard position, we had Chris Duarte, $4,400. We were looking for 22 points on him. He ended up with 18 yesterday. He was a mess, only played 25 minutes, 2 for 10 shooting, so not the best shooting day overall. If he just ends up making two more shots, he pays off for his value. Then we had shooting guard, pivoted to Kelly Oubre, $7,800. Looking for 39 points out of him. He got to 46, so he was a hit. And at the small forward position, we had Josh Hart, $5,000, looking for 25 points out of him. He got to 39.25, so he was a very good hit as well. And then at power forward, Chris Boucher, who ended up in that starting lineup, $4,000, looking for 20 points out of him. He got to 26, so he was a hit. And then center was just kind of like this cheap center day, and it was like, okay, early on I had Tristan Thompson, then Alex Lennon was starting, then Vernon Carey was starting once Nick Richards got ruled out. It was just kind of a mess overall. Obviously, the best one ended up being Javel McGee, but by the time we got to lock, we did not know if DeAndre Aiden was going to play or not. And by the time you got to like the 8 o'clock games, we still didn't know. So it was a really risky play if you were going to play him. I did go with Vernon Carey for the most part. He was $3,000 looking for 15 points on him. He got to 11, so not a good play by any means. He only ended up playing 11 minutes in this game. There was that risk with him as we've seen last year. There's a couple games where he played big minutes, and then there's a couple games where he just kind of played a couple of rotations and didn't do much else. Unfortunately, yesterday was one of those games where he didn't do too much else. So a little bit of a hit or miss day on the DraftKings side. Some very, very good hits, but the misses were not the best either. Then on the Fandle side, we had Cody Martin at the point guard position. $5,000 looking for 25 points on him. He got to 48.1. Then Josh Giddy at the shooting guard position, $5,500 looking for 27, 28 points on him. He got the 30.9, so he was a hit as well. Kelly Oubre once again, $7,400 looking for 37 points on him. He got to 46.7, so he was a hit. Then we get down to Alex Land, kind of talked about him in the grouping with the DraftKings centers, but he had power forward eligibility as well on the Fandle side. So Marvin Bagley actually ended up playing a decent amount in this game. Tristan Thompson got 21 minutes. Alex Len only got 13 minutes in this game. And in a couple of my GPP lines, I actually ended up playing Marvin Bagley, and that was probably the better play overall. But, you know, trying to figure out that rotation yesterday was not the easiest in the world because Alex Len could have played anywhere between 12 and 24 minutes. So obviously there was a little bit of volatility there. But just didn't pay off yesterday. We're looking for about 19, 20 points on him. He got to 13.6. And then last but not least, we had Jonas Valanciunas, $7,500. Looking for 37, 38 points on him. He got to 32.7. Only ended up playing 27 minutes in this game, and it was a blowout as well. So if he gets those extra four or five minutes, he definitely pays off for this price tag overall. So a little bit of a hit or miss day on both sides. Some very good hits. A couple of misses that didn't turn out quite as well, though. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to the injuries and in play for tonight's slate. So there is the one afternoon game between the Orlando Magic and the Los Angeles Clippers. So the Magic are without Michael Carter-Williams, Markel Foltz, Jonathan Isaac, Etwan Moore, and Jalen Suggs once again. So no changes whatsoever there. And then the Clippers are without Preston Leonard, Paul George, and Nick Batum. Well, Nick Batum's doubtful at this point in time, so it's unlikely that it does end up playing. So they're probably without those four players once again, which is pretty much the, what we were looking at for them the last time out. Moving over to the main slate, we got the Utah Jazz and the Washington Wizards. This is kind of an island game. In theory, if you wanted to punt this game, you could definitely do that. Just set some dummy lineups for DraftKings. Uh, not a ton of value in this game since both teams are relatively healthy or pretty much what we've been seeing out of them. Azabuki's out for the Jazz. Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimuri just out once again for the Washington Wizards. You could chase some value in that game, but you could also definitely punt that game and then go for the value in the other games as well. For the Sacramento Kings, it's just Rashawn Holmes out tonight. Cleveland Cavaliers are all the way healthy at this point in time Chicago Bulls are quite a mess at this point in time we got Patrick Williams Kobe White Matt Thomas Derek Jones Jr. Javante Green and DeMar DeRozan all out at this point in time so most of those people are on the COVID list Patrick Williams has obviously been out for quite a while Alex Caruso is questionable to play tonight for with his hamstring injury I do not think he ends up playing tonight so we're probably going to see some type of lineup with Lonzo Ball uh, Dosan Moose probably going to end up starting again at the shooting guard position then Zach Levine uh, maybe Alizé Johnson, maybe Troy Brown starts at the four. Who knows at this point in time? And then Nikolai Vucevic. So there could be some value in this game. They most notably signed Stanley Johnson and Alfonso McKinney. They're both supposed to be available for this game. Who knows if they play? Who knows how many minutes they actually play if they do end up playing? It's a very tricky situation overall with the Chicago Bulls at this point in time. 
Then for the Miami Heat, they're without Victor Oladipo, Markeith Morris, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo once again. Duncan Robinson listed as a game-time decision, but he is expected to play at this point in time. So pretty much the same exact Heat team that we were looking at the last time out. Moving down to the Houston Rockets, we have Jalen Green and John Wall both out. And then Kevin Porter Jr., Daniel House, and Yuzman Garober. All this is questionable at this point in time. We'll see if any of those three players end up playing tonight. For the Memphis Grizzlies, they're without Zaire Williams, John Morant, Sam Merrill, Brandon Clark, and Dylan Brooks all once again. So pretty much what we were looking at the last time out, they did get Kyle Anderson back, although he only played about 15, 16 minutes last game. We'll see if his minutes go up just a little bit tonight. But otherwise, looking like a little bit of value here, just depending on which site you're on. For your Golden State Warriors, Thompson and Wiseman are out once again. Andre Iguodala is questionable to play. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. He's been missing a couple games at this point in time. For the 76ers, Ben Simmons is out. Grant Ryler, game time decision. Looks like he might play, but he's probably not in the rotation either way, so we're not too worried about him. Then for the Denver Nuggets, Austin Rivers, Jamal Murray are both out. Will Barton listed as a game time decision expected to play. That was just an illness that he was dealing with the other day, so I have no concerns with him at this point in time. Zach Collins is out for the Spurs, and then Kelton Johnson looking like he should be back today. So it looks like he only missed about one game. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. That could change throughout the day as well. But with that being said, that's a quick little rundown on all the injuries in play for tonight's slate. Uh, definitely going to be an interesting six-game slate. A couple little injuries that we're looking at here and there. Probably Alex Caruso is honestly the biggest one at this point in time, oddly enough. Uh, just because if he plays, then he's going to take away some minutes. But who knows how many minutes he's even going to play if he does end up playing. But with that being said, we'll get moved to our DraftKings and talk about my picks over there. So we're going to start off at the point guard position with DeAnthony Melton. He is $5,100, looking for about 26 points. I'm going to project for about 27, 28 points tonight. Got him playing about 28, 29 minutes. About a fantasy point per minute. Definitely a decent matchup against the Houston Rockets tonight. Then at the shooting guard position, we're going back to Imani Brooks. $4,000. He's actually been playing pretty well as of late in that starting lineup, playing bigger minutes. Got him projected for about 23 points tonight. He's gone over that the past couple games. Just want to give him a modest projection overall tonight. Then a small forward is Caleb Martin. If he's in that starting lineup, once again, he looks very, very good. I know he's coming off a career hard game. And, you know, it looks like point chasing, but when he's $3,500 in that starting lineup, playing like 28, 30 minutes, you got to project him for at least 20 to 22 points. So he's not going to get the 40 that he got last time, most likely, but he's still a good value play overall tonight. Then a power forward, we're going with Marvin Bagley. He's been in that rotation. He's been playing at least 22 minutes a game the last couple of games since he's been back. $3,700, look for 18, 19 points at him. Essentially averaging 18 on the season. Got him projected for about 22 points tonight. And it's also important to note that they do play the Cleveland Cavaliers, who do play a bigger lineup. So you're going to have a lot of Jarrett Allen and Devin Mobley out there at the same time. So this is a game that should benefit Marvin Bagley overall, just um, based on matchups and everything like that as well. And then last but not least, we're going back to old reliable Jakob Pertl, $6,600. So his price finally, slowly, slowly creeping up. But we're looking for about 33 points. I'm averaging almost 32 on the season. Got projected for 32, 33 points in this one tonight. But if you go with these five players on the DraftKings side, you have $27,100 remaining. Just over $9,000 per player. So you can definitely pay up for two studs on tonight's slate. And then you can probably find like a mid-range value from there. It just depends on who you want to pay up for. But like yesterday, I'm giving you guys a lot of salary left over to kind of pick your studs and then roll with the punches from there. And if you do it right, can definitely pay off. I had the one lineup yesterday where I had LeBron James and Giannis as well. Unfortunately, I had Shai Gilgis Alexander in that lineup too, and he just kind of tanked. But that lineup still had almost 300 points just based on the solid core, the cheapness, and then being able to pay up for some studs as well. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my picks over there as well. So on the Fandle side, we're going to start off with point guard Kyle Lowry, $6,700, looking for 33, 34 points out of him. Got him projected for about 35, 36 points tonight. Obviously, no Jimmy Butler and no Bam Adebayo once again. Definitely helps Kyle Lowry out. So as long as his shot's going down, as long as this game stays competitive, which it should since the Bulls and the Heat are both very, very thin at this point in time. So Kyle Lowry looking like one of the better values at the point guard position tonight. Then at shooting guard, we're going with Desmond Bain, $6,600. Seems like an aggressive price tag for him when you look at the season in totality. But when you look at this Memphis team and what they have left, somebody's got to go out there and shoot the ball and somebody's got to score the ball. And essentially at this point in time, that's probably going to be Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. So 33 points is what we're looking for out of him. I got him projected for about 34, 35 points tonight. If his shot's going down, we've definitely seen that he has some upside for more after that 39-point outing the last time out. 
Then at a small forward position, we got Will Barton, $6,000, looking for 30 points. Sam, averaging almost 31 on the season. I have him projected for about 30, 31 points tonight. So definitely a decent little value play overall here. There's not a lot of value at the small forward position today overall. So Will Barton is a guy that does end up standing out. Then once again, we've got Jaron Jackson Jr., $6,400. His price tag only went up $200. Looking for 32 points on him, averaging 31.5 on the season. Got him projected for 36 points tonight. Definitely looking like one of the better values overall on the FanDuel side tonight. Then last but not least at that center position, I went with Marvin Bagley, $4,400. Not quite as good of a price tag as it is over on DraftKings, but still got him projected for about 22, 23 points tonight. And like I said, Cleveland likes to play with those two bigs. Plus, you know Laurie Markman's in there as well. So you can always slide Harrison Barnes over to the three, Marvin Bagley at the four, and still play a traditional center and match up quite nicely with the Cleveland Cavaliers team. So Marvin Bagley is a guy that I do like tonight. I don't think he's going to be like super popular just seems like everybody's kind of got that stigma against Marvin Bagley. So we'll just have to see what ends up happening tonight with that. But overall, looking like a decent little value play. But with that being said, if you go with these five players on the FanDuel side, you have $29,900 remaining, just under $7,500 per player. So you can definitely pay up for his stud, maybe two, and find some dirt cheap values. Or do a little bit more balanced approach and go from there. Definitely a lot of different ways that you can approach it on the FanDuel side tonight. But with that being said, these are my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for today, December 11th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, be sure to let me know your favorite play, whether it's on FanDuel or DraftKings for tonight's slate. And then as always, I'll be listing all the injury updates and starting lineups down in the comments below throughout the day. So definitely be sure you're checking up on that throughout the day. Get the most up-to-date news. I'll also be dropping the updated core about 20 to 30 minutes prior to lock as well. But with that being said, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL, helping you with your fantasy football teams. And then with that being said, if you are a new or current subscriber who's yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. And like I've been saying, I post up daily NBA DFS videos just like this. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special little shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely means a lot to me and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.